my dear brothers and sisters we were having a bible study on the acts of the apostles and we were reflecting about in the, about the chapter 4th of acts of the apostles now we will continue reflecting these acts of the apostles chapter 4 verse 13 onwards we completed until 13 and we will continue from 13 let us re- read this now when they saw the boldness of peter and john and realized that they were uneducated and ordinary men they were amazed and recognized them as companions of jesus my dear brothers and sisters we were explaining the importance of this meeting now where are they now peter and john standing in front of sanhedrin 70 elders the captain of the temple and the high priest and his son in law and all these important people are gathered to write together around them and these two prisoners peter and john they were speaking boldly they were not afraid they knew this is the same group of people who crucified jesus just around 3 months ago these are the same people the same people crucified jesus they have the power they have authority to do this and they can do it they may even do against peter they can even crucify peter peter knew this he was ready to face it he was ready to face this crisis and he was ready to go to any extent but he did not compromise his teaching he preached the gospel with boldness and then these people the leaders they were so shocked they were amazed and they also came to know these are the companions of jesus now jesus is working through them they could only kill one jesus but now so many jesus my dear brothers and sisters this happens and if christianity is persecuted blessed are the christianity if the which is persecuted christianity will flourish like anything all those who are trying to persecute christians beware of this because each christian who is persecuted in his blood thousands will flow thousands will come out of it because that is how the christianity flourished in this world so now let's read verse 14 when they saw the man who had been cured standing beside them so now they cannot accuse these people this sanhedrin they had no position to attack and or even imprison these two people peter and john because there is a there is a witness there is a man who is standing next to them the man who got healing it is a clear evidence god worked through these two people therefore they were really afraid to take any action against peter and john because the witness is standing the evidence of god's protection god's intervention is standing next to them the man who got healed and they had nothing to say in opposition It's because of this man who is a evidence of god's intervention these leaders elders had nothing to say in opposition was 15 so they ordered them now they want to escape from this situation because now they know they are in a position that they cannot accuse these two people of any mistake so they ordered them to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another so they asked everybody the john and peter to stand outside and all these leaders so called elders intelligent educated people the sanhedrin they discussed the matter with one another inside and the peter and john were standing outside was 16 they said what will we do with them they were in a dilemma they were in confusion what will we do with them for it is obvious to all who live in jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them we cannot deny it this miracle cannot be denied everybody ag- agreed even the leaders even his their enemies they were so clear that there is a notable miracle has happened that means they knew there is a supernatural hand here there is a supernatural hand here there is a fulfillment of the prophecy there is something special but still they did not accept the disciples 
still they did not accept jesus what does it mean they knew there is some truth in it they knew there is some supernatural thing god's intervention but still they were afraid of losing their comfort zones if they accept jesus christ then they will lose all the positions that they are holding now they will have to come out of all the sanhedrin and all the positions they will have to follow jesus radically like uh, you know saint paul when he was saul he was a powerful man but when he became a christian he lost everything he left everything and came after jesus so the same thing will have to happen to all the members of the sanhedrin so now they notice something supernatural is happening here but they were not ready to accept jesus many people today is in the same situation they know jesus is there they know there is something supernatural in jesus and his faith and there is something special in the bible and follow jesus is very important but they don't want to follow they don't want to follow jesus radically they keep sunday mass and everything special but other than that they have no connection with jesus because if they practice christianity daily then they will have to come out of their comfort zones they may have to give up many of their pleasures they may have to give up many of many things that they hold so special for them and therefore they keep a distance from god the same thing happened in the herod in the old, in in the early narratives uh, the infancy narrative of jesus herod came to know jesus is going to be born in bethlehem and and there is a b- boy born the the born king of jewish people he is born in bethlehem herod came to know but still he was not ready to accept he wanted to eliminate this messiah therefore he killed all the children below 2 years old he knew the truth but he doesn't want to accept because he is afraid of losing his position many people today knows the truth but they are keeping quiet many people the so called atheist those so called those who believe they those who say i don't believe in god they know there is god but they don't want to profess it because if they profess it they will have to come out of their comfort zone they will have to give up many of their things that they are holding as special therefore it is easy for them to say i don't believe in god so they feel they are free my but are their the conscience is not free their heart is not free their soul is not free that is why they are having a turmoil in a turmoil they experience in their daily life even today there are so many people in their inside of their heart they know there is god inside of their heart they know there is a super intelligent being who controls this whole universe otherwise this world the whole universe cannot be like this there is a super intelligence behind working behind this otherwise this world cannot be like this the human being cannot be like this our body cannot be like this a small animal cannot be like this the plants cannot grow like this there is a super intelligent being behind it but at the same time they don't want to accept it if they accept it they will have to give an answer for many things which they do and therefore the comfort zone they protect here you can see these elders they want to protect their comfort zone they don't want to break this comfort zone let's read they said what will be do to them for it is obvious to all who live in jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them we cannot deny it was 17 but to keep it from spreading further so we will control it this new movement this new movement should should not spread it should be controlled it should be cut, curtailed and therefore they said let us warn them let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name now let's some somehow escape from this situation because we have no basis to find accusation against these two people now we need to wash our hand and escape now we will do one thing we will warn them and say no more speaking in the name of jesus don't ever speak in this name they didn't even pronounce the name of jesus they said don't speak in this name then what happened was 18 so they called them 
and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. You know, the Sanhedrin is the highest supreme court of the Jewish people. Once they order something, everyone is supposed to obey. No one is supposed to go against it. Because that is the final judgment. Therefore, the Sanhedrin and the whole authorities of Jewish people, they called these two people, Peter and John, and ordered them. It's an order. Order them not to speak or teach. Don't even speak, don't even teach at all in the name of Jesus. Don't speak at all in the name of Jesus. This is what they ordered. They thought with this they will calm down. They thought with this they will think, okay, anyway they are not punished. They will be saved so they can escape. They thought Peter and John will be happy that they are set free. Therefore, they will agree with this order, this warning. Therefore, they warned them strictly and said, don't ever speak or teach anything in the name of Jesus. Verse 19. But Peter and John answered them, but they were not ready to withdraw. These Peter and John are no more afraid. They are not the same Peter and John whom these people met three months ago. These Peter and John are different now. They are on fire. They are on fire. There is somebody working through them. There is something moving inside of them. They said, they answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you or rather than to God, you must judge. First, you should tell us whether we should obey God or obey you. They know there is some supernatural hand in, in them. Otherwise, they can't perform such a big miracle. So this is what they thought. So they were so afraid. They said, whom should we uh, obey? Should we obey you or obey God? You must judge. They are threatening back. Who are these two? Ordinary fishermen. Uneducated. The only quality that they have is companions of Jesus Christ. They are just companions of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, we read like this. For we cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. They said, even if you tell us to not to speak, we cannot keep from speaking. We cannot keep from speaking about what we have seen and heard. We have experienced it. We have seen it and we have heard it. We cannot keep from speaking about it. They are telling them, there is an inner compulsion from inside. There is a spirit working inside. There is a fire burning inside. This inner compulsion doesn't allow us to stop speaking. And also we are obeying the command of Jesus. Jesus said, go to the ends of the earth and preach the gospel. Therefore, there is a command we obey and there is an inner compulsion. Therefore, we cannot keep from speaking. Verse 21, we read, after threatening them, they knew they are in trouble. They can't do anything. These people are not going to listen. And the, all the people are believing them because there is a notable miracle happened. Therefore, they threatened them and said, if you ever speak the, in the name of Jesus, we will show you our real color. We will teach you a lesson. We will do this. We will do that. We will kill you. We will threaten you. We will hang you. We will crucify you. All these threatening words. And let them go. With all this threatening, they were let them go. They, they were allowed to go. And because they could not find no, they could not find any way to punish them because of the people, for all of them praised God for what had happened. These people all only concerned about the popular opinion. They were really afraid to punish them because all the people were praising God for what happened. They saw the witness. Miracle happened. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, verse 21. Two, for the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. He was just more than 40 years old. He was there. 23. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priest and the elders had said to them. Now these two people, John and Peter, they went back to the other members. They were all gathered together. How many of them? They were 5,000 people. Initially, only 120 then 3,000 people gathered for the festival. 3,000 people were there. Now some more people were joined. 5,000 people. The first Christians, the total number has reached to 5,000 people. 
and after they were released they went to their friends and reported what the chief priest and, and they went and told john and james john and peter told all the people see this is what happened the elders called us the sun had been invited us and they were threatening us but peter was not ready to leave he he bounced back he spoke back and he was so powerful he was full of boldness and courage they were speaking about how the holy spirit was guide, guiding them verse 24 when they heard it they raised their voices together to god and said every situation led them to praise and worship every goodness led them to praise and worship every event led them to worship god my dear brothers and sisters this was the characteristics of the early christians anything good happened anything any event happened even if it is torture even if it is imprisonment even if it is suffering and flogging they ended up in worship every situation led them to worship whether good or bad every situation led them to worship in fact it is a negative experience that they had until then there was no official threat now they have a threat until then they none of them were imprisoned other than jesus now they were imprisoned for the first time therefore this is not a positive experience it is a negative experience now all the sanhedrin are against them initially there was no only they were against jesus now they all the sanhedrin are against all the christians now the captain of the temple is against them initially they were not now therefore this situation is a very negative ex- situation but why did god allow that why did god allow this negative situation in their life in the early stages of the christianity why did god allow because of this negative experience first thing 2000 more people were added to the christianity second all the elders were able to listen to the preaching of peter all the whole the peter was able to preach the gospel to the sanhedrin if this negative did i had spirit did not happen peter will never get a chance to preach to them so peter was got a chance to preach the gospel third now they are ready to face even prison earlier peter was a you know he was a man of fear he doesn't want to go to the prison and that is why he denied jesus three times now for the first time he had an experience of imprisonment imprisonment though it is only for one night but he started now he knows what is prison he start experiencing it so now he is ready to face it fourth one they increase their boldness and courage now in the first sight itself they were able to preach the gospel to the sanhedrins the captain of the temple and all the uh, even the chief priest and the is uh, son in law and all the others they were able to preach the gospel now they are not afraid of anyone their boldness and courage increased and these are the goodness that came because of this negative experience that is why god allowed these things to happen remember there are some negative experiences god would permits in your life because god knows the goodness that is going to come out of it that is why romans 8:28 we know god can turn every evil into good we know that all things work together for good for those who love god who are called according to his purpose even if negative things happens in your life god can turn everything into good and in fact this negative experience of imprisonment and an insult from the elders was turned into a big blessing for the early christians especially for peter and john let's go back to read when they heard it they raised their voices together to god and said together they prayed together they raised their voice it was not a meditation prayer but it was a raising vocal prayer loud prayer they were worshiping god the situation led them to praise and worship every situation in your life should lead you to worship every negative and positive situation in your life should lead you to worship and what did they worship sovereign lord who made the heaven and the earth and the sea and everything in them verse 25 it is you who said by the holy spirit through our ancestor david your servant 
why did the gentiles rage and the people's imagine vain things now they are repeating the psalm psalm chapter chapter 2 the psalm chapter 2 they were repeating the chapter 2 of the psalm but you know they were praying in one accord they didn't they have any confusion when they were praying nowadays when people come together for prayer there is confusion one person say i want divine mercy another person say no i want holy rosary another person say i want meditation i want silent prayer this confusion in many communities when they come together for intercession they come with lots of zeal and prayer zeal and the moment the prayer starts one person starts the other person doesn't join because other person want divine mercy another person want holy rosary another person want to read bible another person want to pray uh, small small prayers this is the biggest problem many people face today and such places the holy spirit will not work the spirit of babel the babel tower will work but not the holy spirit holy spirit bring everyone together there is unity and there is peace there is order no disorder therefore any community or any intercessory prayer where there is confusion it taking place because each one has different desire is better come out of that place because there is no holy spirit working in that community and or those who are creating problem should be asked to leave because they are bringing disunity because early christians they prayed with one accord one heart one mind there was no confusion they were just worshiping god praise the lord and then verse 26 we read like this verse 26 the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the lord and against his messiah now this is they are reading repeating the psalm chapter 2 psalm chapter 2 the whole chapter my dear brothers and sisters whenever they prayed they were praying psalms they mostly they were praying psalms even jesus when he prayed psalms that is why initially in the church we had psalms repetition of psalms even today in the uh, the holy hours when the priest and and deacons pray the holy hours in the religious houses when they pray holy hours most of the prayers are psalms repetition of the psalms was 27 for in this city in fact both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel gathered together against your holy servant Jesus whom you anointed so they were continue praying all whatever that, that happened there they were just repeating it to God you know many times I've seen people asking why should we speak to Jesus everything he knows everything why should we tell everything to Jesus because he knows you know these unnecessary questions don't ask just pray whatever that comes to your mind just speak out see the early christians they were speaking out everything that was happening there whatever that comes to their mind whatever that was taking place in front of them they were just speaking it out even though they know jesus knows everything for and they were explaining everything even about jesus and verse 28 to do whatever your hand your plan had predestined to take place whatever that you predestined to take place you are doing it now and now and now they are praying a very powerful prayer now lord look at their threats there is a threat happening there there is a threat in front of us there is a highest threat from the highest positions but we are not ready to withdraw we are not going to escape we are going to face it one side there is a threat now another side please give boldness and courage see they are not asking help they are not asking a way out they are not asking for some convenience or conveyance to escape from that city they are not asking for a hiding place they are only asking for courage and boldness my dear brothers and sisters now they are asking there is a powerful threat therefore grant your servants to speak your word with all boldness they know even if there is a threat the word should not be stopped the preaching of the word should not be stopped even if there is a threat my dear brothers and sisters even the laws of the country may be against you from preaching but you should never stop preaching the word of god 
Don't care about these unnecessary rules which are trying to stop you from preaching the gospel because before all these rules and regulation comes before all these politicians were born Jesus was here and the preaching of the word of God was here therefore what was here earlier let it continue and we should be preaching the gospel and the preaching the truth even it at the cost of your own lives and verse 30 we read like this while you stretch out your hand to so give the boldness for the people of god who are preaching and give the courage for those are preachers and you stretch out your hand to heal and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant jesus when the preaching is done with boldness the signs and wonders will be performed in the name of jesus christ even in the online ministry even if you preach the gospel anywhere any part of the world in any method the miracles will happen wonders will take place because this is the promise this is what happened to the early christians praise the lord verse 31 we read when they had prayed so when they prayed god approved it god gave them courage in initial days especially in the acts of the apostles you can see the powerful manifestations of the presence of god in the form of wind in the form of fire in the form of the gift of tongue in the form of the earthquake and shaking of the whole building so it was there very common in the early church because they needed consolation they need support consolation prizes because this is the beginning of the church when they had prayed the place in which they were gathered together was shaken and they were all filled with the holy spirit and spoke the word of god with boldness praise the lord they were all already they are filled with the holy spirit but rekindling of the holy spirit is needed maybe you have you had a baptism in the holy spirit sometime back maybe you had an anointing of the holy spirit sometime back when you joined the ministry maybe when you had a conversion you had a baptism in the holy spirit for the first time does it mean you can live with this baptism forever you need to rekindle the anointing of the holy spirit every now and then even peter even john all the apostles early christians they were experiencing this rekindling of the holy spirit now and then every now and then therefore we need to renew the spirit inside of us that is why we have frequent retreats frequent confessions monthly recollections half yearly uh, retreats and yearly retreats these things are compulsory for all of us all the family people all not only religious people and priests even those who are leading family family life you are supposed to go for retreats at least once in a year you should attend the retreat and refill the holy spirit and every for frequent confessions refill your holy spirit rekindle the holy spirit it is needed without the help of the holy spirit you cannot survive let's read verse 32 now the whole group of those who believed were one heart one soul no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common now they all those who joined they started selling their property and hand it over to the apostles and the apostles were holding it this is how the communism the first idea for communism started most probably karl marx and the other engels and got inspiration from the bible and it is true that they are christians and they are catholics they were catholics and they were christians and they got bible inspirations from the bible and they started communism but there is a problem of the early church so, so uh, you know socialism or uh, and the, this present day communism has got a difference the how the early church worked there is common property even communism speak about common property the only the, the government will be the authority of the whole property everything will be together and it will be distributed for everyone communism the early church also was one done the similar things but there is a difference communism says your property is mine give it to me that is communism but the early church was their attitude was like this my property belongs to you i share it this is the difference between communism and the socialism of the church so communism says your property belongs to me give it to me i will handle it so the government takes the property of everyone 
that is what happens in the communist governments in the whole world central leadership and central possession the government is in charge of all the property and they distribute whatever according to the need of the people and but in the early church is just opposite there is no compulsion that everyone has to sell the property and give it to them it is each one's decision it's up to them whether to give the property or not but most of them they sack, sold all the property and they said my property belongs to you share it and they gave it like this so this is the difference between communism and the early church understanding so always make sure there as i have seen some communist leaders saying jesus christ is the first communist there is nothing but rubbish and uh, nothing but uh, lack of understanding about the early church so my dear brothers and sisters these two things uh, is uh, we should we should understand now why did they sold the property and collected in common why did they keep all these things common is it because one reason is they thought jesus is going to come soon they initially they had a misunderstanding that jesus is going to come soon though jesus told them it can happen any time in the future it can be even in the seasons that means it can be thousands even thousands of years later but he didn't tell any date so they thought jesus is going to come soon therefore they kept everything in common secondly there is a reason majority of the members of the christianity they are not locals of jerusalem because the first 3000 people who got baptized they all gathered from different countries who had come for festival they came from different countries and they came for festival and then after baptism they did not go back they were waiting to know more about this religion this faith they were really remaining in jerusalem but they have no job no property no house no shelter and all these 3000 people should be taken care therefore there was common property was needed and that is one of the reasons they were they all the other members who joined they sold their property and give it to the apostles therefore they could share the money among all the members and all these refugees who had come to jerusalem and continued and got baptized and continue living there should be taken care and there is this can happen many people they though they came for the festival and they became christians and they did not go back to their families they went back after so many years being christians in jerusalem and learned all the theology and doctrines of the church and then they went back to their family i remember when i was very small i was in the school days that was the early days of the divine ministry divine porta ministry was uh, a big sensation all all over india every part of the world every part of india and i remember in our remote village where i was living and uh, so many people are talking about divine potter ministry and every all the drunkards and dr- uh, and all those are addicted to wrong things and bad habits they were forcefully taken into one bus or car and for and the parish priest arranges or some people arranges and everyone was taken to divine and all those who go to divine majority many of them doesn't come back so uh, so i remember one of my friends one of our neighbors who was uh, very addicted to dr- uh, drinking he was a big drunkard and big nuisance for the whole village and so all the y- young people they gathered together say they collected some money they arranged a special vehicle and forcefully put him in the car and sent him to divine and and there were so many other people who uh, who were very good people but very prayerful people they also went with him and after the retreat all the others came back he didn't come back because he got converted and he remained there as a volunteer in the retreat center and he and his parents i remember his parents were so uh, one side they were happy and other side they were concerned because he didn't he's not coming back even after one month two months he came back only after one year and he started always saying rosary and always praying always with the bible sharing the visiting all the houses and speaking about jesus so he was totally changed so this is exactly what happened to the early christians they only came to jerusalem for the festival pentecost festival they were coming from different countries all the way from far away countries but after listening to the preaching of peter 
they all got converted and baptized and they didn't go back they remained in jerusalem but what about their food and accommodation and all these things so that is why the early christians started voluntarily sacrificing their property they handed over to peter and all the apostles and they divided the food and everything accordingly to all the christians who are newly baptized and that is how the common property and everything came in the early church praise the lord so now the whole group of those who believed were one heart and one soul and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common verse 33 let's read and with great power the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the lord jesus and great grace came up they were preaching more about the resurrection the more they speak about resurrection more grace came upon them when we speak about the life after death that is when you grace get get more grace more grace will be given to you when you speak there is a life after death because the world wants to listen about this world everybody when you whom, whom you meet everybody wants to listen about this world how to live a good life how to be happy how to be prosper how to get more money how to get a job how to get healing how to get miracle how to get deliverance everybody wants this worldly things but hardly you can see people speaking about resurrection hardly you can speak, hear people speak about life after death but bible says anybody who testifies the resurrection life life after death more grace will be given to them great grace will come upon them verse 34 34 there was not a needy person among them for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold all those who sold everything they brought it and give it to them go and give it to the priest and give it to the apostles and said you distribute to everyone please distribute we don't want anything we are ready to give whatever share that you give we are ready to live with that so common property and sharings were given to everyone verse 35 they laid it at the apostles feet they gave it to not to anyone but to give to the apostles feet and it was distributed to each as any had need according to the need it was distributed verse 36 there was a levite a native of cyprus joseph to whom the apostles gave the name barnabas which means son of encouragement there was a levite levite person he also had some property normally the levites do not have land of their proportion uh, so these are the there were levites who were working in the temple they don't have property or possessions possessions because god is their portion but there are some other levites who are not getting chance to work in the church and the temple they have they were allowed to have property and verse 37 he sold a field that belonged to him then brought the money and laid it at the apostles feet he is a levite he is a priest and he knew that he doesn't need any land anymore because as per the rule in the old testament god is their portion therefore he understood and he repented he collected all the money and give it at the apostles feet praise the lord now we have completed the chapter 4 and we will continue the bible study tomorrow